Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and a happy Sunday to everyone and a very good evening to all of them who are watching this video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to manage devices using device control technique. All right. So in the previous video, or in the last video, I had given a brief or um, a complete demonstration about how device control management works um, if you work in an IT organization. That too, specifically if you're working uh, in a cybersecurity domain and you're also an uh, endpoint security specialist. Okay, B the basic responsibility of an endpoint security administrator is that he is the one who configures device control policies or uh, pushed via your traditional antivirus softwares. All right. Um, so in this video, I'm going to help you in understanding how the device control uh, is actually configured using a policy okay that is pushed via uh, your traditional uh, epo you have uh, mcafee endpoint orchestrator okay if you're using semantic it is semantic endpoint protection manager all right and uh, if you're using a uh, defender it is going to be your uh, m365 security center okay it is mostly the cloud version of your um, consoles okay generally this mcafee epo and semantic endpoint protection manage uh, management console will be your on-prem based um, endpoint management consoles all right but however uh, when it comes to your microsoft defender you generally have your security center portal managing all of these all right uh, and all these policies are pushed via SCCM, either SCCM or your group policy object, your Active Directory. All right. And uh, when it comes to your Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager or uh, when it comes to your McAfee EPO, all the policies are managed centrally via your um, Endpoint orchest Orchestrator from McAfee or uh, it will be your Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager, which manages all these policies that also includes your device control policy. All right, so what this policy contains first what it contains is the policy will contain all the default hardware lists available okay when I talk about default hardware uh, lists okay uh, all these hardware devices generally what it contains is it contains a class ID or it also contains something called as device ID all right so this is what I have just made a document guys okay you can see just now what I have specified here okay a device ID is a specific ID that is given to each device okay a device ID can be more effective for blocking or allowing devices because it is, uh, because it is uh, made by uh, concatenating a list of data about a particular device okay so device IDs are more uh, generally in a readable format okay so if you see this here are two common formats for device IDs okay so what it contains is it contains a class type and uh, vendor information as well as model uh, specific uh, I mean model is nothing but it will be your uh, number okay vendor will be your uh, make like SanDisk um, it could be cruiser blade or it could be a lot of other models as well. Okay, Toshiba any kind of uh, USB uh, Device for that fact. Okay, so this is how it, the device ID will look like okay, for example Here are the examples of device IDs guys. Okay first it will contain a class Okay, then it will contain a type. Okay, and it will contain the vendor and also the model number okay also the revision and also it will contain a serial number so all these uh, constitute a hardware ID or sorry a device ID basically okay you can see this is the uh, class which is USB store okay it will generally uh, uh, it will generally uh, connect that it is a uh, USB device that is how it is specified the first comes the class and then comes the uh, type okay it could be a disk okay and then uh, and here if you see the vendor as you can see over here it is it says sandisk okay and 
model it tells the model num uh, name or number uh, it says cruiser is the model and then there is a revision all right which comes over here the revision and then there is a serial number guys okay this is this entire part is the serial number okay so this is how uh, device ids format is constitute uh, constituted all right and it say it works the same for uh, apple ipod device as well class will be usb store and then uh, there will be a type okay it says a disk okay disk apple and then there is a vendor ipod all right uh, sorry guys disk will be your type and then there is a vendor apple and then the model is ipod all right and then there is a revision which is the 1.621 uh, over here and then there is a followed by there is a serial number okay so this is how the uh, and then same goes to hitachi as well id hard drive which is again a uh, which again it would be it would be the uh, it could be anything guys not just the usb all right and then you can see for device ids wild cards are always supported okay for example when it comes to allowing a particular uh, uh, maybe a particular vendors usb drive what you can do is if you simply add asterisk over here after and let me copy paste and show you if i simply add an asterisk after let's say cruiser if i just add a asterisk over here anything any i mean any model number okay whether let's say any models coming under sand disk will be allowed guys because here the thing is the serial number is going to differ or it is going to uh, it is going to distinct uh, all the i mean every uh, usb device will have a different or unique serial number so that's how the differentiation will happen okay the bif uh, the bifurcation will i mean will be happening with the distinctiveness of the serial number guys okay if the device contains a different serial number over here at the end of the device id it means it's a different uh, device altogether however if you want to allow every usb devices uh, under the sandisk model uh, name prod underscore cruiser okay all the usb devices within this uh, uh, cruiser category is going to be allowed okay so that's how the endpoint security administrators are going to uh, whitelist a usb device within an it uh, network only using the hardware id that is specific or unique to each device all right and they aren't going to allow uh, the entire usb uh, devices using a wildcard just because this particular asterisk over here is going to allow all the usb drives um, coming under the category of sandisk prod underscore cruiser make or model uh, model names okay any usb drive that has model name uh, sandisk uh, cruiser all these usb drives are going to be whitelisted okay with just one asterisk after the uh, make over here the model name over here all right and so that's how the differentiation happens guys okay the differentiation happens in this way and uh, after which what happens is if we just go down below this document right there is something called class id i think i have not documented the class id thing just yet so let me see if i can make a document on class id as well and just to add guys uh let's say if i want to allow this particular um 
device ID. Okay, this is the make of the uh, uh, SanDisk. So this is this applies for uh, SanDisk Broad Cruiser uh, USB flash drive, and this is the serial number of the, that particular uh, SanDisk uh, drive or uh, flash drive coming. I mean, made by SanDisk uh, vendor. And so all we need to do here is firstly we need to add this device ID. Firstly we need to check if uh, this device ID comes under uh, default devices list, all right? So that uh, this is where this is where the policy is going to come into picture or play. We just have to cross verify whether this particular hardware ID is already white listed or not. If it is not white listed then we need to add this device okay into the uh, device control policy okay once after adding it to the default hardware uh, list okay and then we would be able to allow this particular hardware um, device id okay or device id or hardware id into the whitelist policy um, that will um, actually allow this particular device alone but rather it will exclude rest of the um, hardware devices that comes under sandisk and prod cruiser uh, model name category right so only we will be allowing this hardware id and then ignoring rest of them right so this way we are securing our uh, network or companies secure the network by just allowing specific uh, authorized uh, USB devices and by blocking rest of them okay so that it prevents um, data theft okay as well as it prevents uh, security breaches all right and before they allow guys okay the local cyber security team will also check whether this particular USB drive is encrypted with a password um, with a password or with a or it is protected uh, with a decryption key or not all right because unencrypted USB drives will not be allowed at all okay whenever um, uh, data is exchanged okay between stakeholders or within the IT companies okay they will ensure the uh, data present within the uh, USB flash drives is encrypted okay and also it is um, also it needs to be ensured that it is actually free from any viruses all right they will ensure the USB uh, flash drive is scanned prior to copying of uh, confidential um, data companies confidential data Firstly, they will scan it for any viruses, all right, and also ensure that the device uh, in the form of uh, USB uh, flash drives are indeed uh, password protected, okay, or it is encrypted with a decryption key, all right. So that's how it is done, guys. And I'm just going to quickly search for uh, some online articles and give you some insight about what is class ID okay within the device control management so guys I'm back so here is what class ID is about okay a class ID is a generic category of devices that are designated by a Windows operating system okay and also class ID is always listed as a GUID all right so here are the examples of some of the class IDs guys okay for disk drives this is going to be the class id so this is universally accepted guys this is not going to change at all right when it comes to disk drive this is going to be the class id right and when it comes to storage devices this is going to be the class id okay so this information is not going to change at all it's universal for everyone usb devices this is going to be the class id guys all right and device, uh, DVDs and CD ROMs, this is going to be the class ID, guys. And ID, this is going to be the class IDs, guys. And this is going to be the class ID for PCM CIE, right? And uh, if I just talk about a note, just wanted to give you a note generally, wildcards are not supported on class IDs, guys, all right? So that is understandable, okay? So when so generally, when it comes to IT organizations, they will never. Uh, block or allow 
hardware devices using their class IDs. That's simply because, for example, let's say if I create a rule within the device control to um, allow or block USB devices uh, under its class ID, then for example, let's say if I um, let's say if I want to if I allow this particular class ID over here, which is tagged to USB devices, all the USB drives are going to get allowed, guys. Okay, regardless of model name, model number, all right, and um, make of the does not depend. It does not matter what kind of USB device it is. Okay, everything is going to get allowed, all right. But when it comes to hardware devices or or device IDs in particular. You can allow it based out of its device ID that is unique to every USB devices. Okay, and it is device specific guys. Device ID is nothing but it's device specific. Every device will have its own or unique device ID. Okay, and that's the speciality of using your device ID to either block or allow that particular device under the device control policy. All right. However, when it comes to class IDs, okay, if you just uh, use the class ID for either uh, whitelisting or blacklisting, okay, it's gonna create a lot of mess, okay. Let's say if I just put a rule, a conflicting rule, okay, within the device control policy, I say that uh, this is going to be, I mean, I just create a rule, okay, to allow USB driven, uh, I mean, let's say if I'm going to uh, block all the USB devices, okay, by just uh, putting a rule that says uh, uh, block this particular class ID that is tagged to any USB device, okay. And then what it what is what it is going to do is it's going to block everything, okay. Then even if we create a, a, a rule that is going to um, let's say if I'm just going to try try and allow this particular um, USB device, okay, which I showed you earlier, all right. If I'm just going to um, say, if I'm just going to allow this particular USB device using its hardware um, ID, okay, there is high chance that it is going to not work because there is a conflicting rule, okay? Because this particular rule says uh, block any USB device. However, I'm just if I'm just going to put a rule. Um, to just allow this particular hardware uh, ID and it's going to create conflicts. So it's, I mean, it's not, it's basically not uh, ideal to use class IDs for uh, either blocking or allowing actually, right? So it's better use, you use the uh, wildcard format or you just use the, uh, hardware IDs unique to each USB device for either blocking or whitelisting, okay? However, like, but I'm not saying that it's gonna not gonna work, but however, uh, mostly ID organizations uh, will use class IDs if they just do not want to uh, use USB drives within the organization at all, okay, if the data exchange between uh, stakeholders isn't happening using the USB devices, then that's the particular case or scenario where they will tend to use class ID to block everything, okay, I mean, allow nothing at all, I mean, if they are not willing to allow any USB, uh, USB uh, usage of USB flash drives within the ID organization, they may use this class ID to block once for all, okay? So that's how you use the class ID category, guys, okay? Class ID is going to be your um, general categorization of devices, okay? That are particularly designated by your Windows operating system, all right? And uh, so that's how you do it, guys. And again, this video, I suppose, turned out theoretical for everyone. Okay, in the next video, what I'm going to show you is how to uh, use a tool to pull a class ID or device ID of a particular hardware device, okay? So that video is going to be a little interesting than this theoretical video. And we will meet in the next video, guys, with more uh, technical related stuff to cybersecurity, okay? Thank you for watching this video. Until we meet in the next video, stay safe, be healthy, cheers, bye-bye.